we finally reach, this is what I would call the beginning of the next uh, major section, the A section. So it starts with this A minor. And this is the rhythm like for the final time. And an echo. And now, because now we get this different texture, we get the chords in the left hand. And so, because the story of the concert, the piano wasn't working properly, and especially like the pedals weren't working. I'm not sure how much they weren't working, but apparently this is the reason why he chose to play this way uh, and hold the chords with the left hand a lot. So the left hand gets really passive. It, it may, mostly goes between these chords, A minor, D major. Of course, if we have a pedal that's working, we can of course add pedal on a piano that's a working instrument, even with holding this. But then the right hand plays all the uh, fun stuff uh, on the surface. Uh, so this feels like a cadenza for a really long time. You get like four pages of just left hand holding notes, changing between them slowly and the right hand. It's very free. So we're starting out with a few more chords than just the A minor and the Gs. It's uh, mostly, most of the time, an E minor after the A minor, and then sometimes then he throws in an F major in the mix, a little bit surprising, but it gets more and more condensed. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this, maybe not everything, we'll see. Oh, and one final thing, the melody is always on these three notes. The A, like part of the A minor, uh, uh, notes close to A minor, but you can get them on on the different chord. They create different functions. So in the beginning we have this is the ninth of A resolving, and now going to G major. So here we, with the C is like a, the fourth in, in G, resolving to the third. And okay, so this thing about the ornaments, in this section, the ornaments sound just like French Baroque ornaments. So like composers like Rameau or Couperin, if you listen to piano music by them, this is like 18th century or even 17th century, I'm not sure. Uh, there you have these kind of ornaments, very prominently on the melody often. Okay, so again. So the Phrygian vibes again. Piano needs to think for two bars here. This ornament, I mean. There's some more jazz element there. Going between these melody notes. I think you start to feel already these amazing feelings where you just go between the chords because they are for two bars you're with one chord the A minor and then when the D counts it's a resolution to a major chord never sounds as beautiful as it does in this piece. It's almost like that. Um, so, yeah. Maybe getting 
a little bit more energy in the right hand cadenza style but a long time to think pause here this is the F major like a surprising uh, He makes this sound at the concert as well and you I can really feel how you want to do it after this this amazing bar so much uh, like he's trying to break away from these notes just these three notes like trying different turns up and down and the resolution something new there now the a minor and this is the the pain and the melody notes here Re like really loud you can almost hear like the strings vibrating in a way they're not supposed to do on the recording here it attacks them it's so raw and heartfelt trying something new a new idea of ornament here going up and down over the G major chord this is like a more notes here increasing the the frequency I can't play it as good now as when I did the recording so you have to excuse me energy a little bit here now for the first time in this cadenza we start to feel we start to get a little bit of a pulse and now we have only like G major and A minor left here We get the famous stamping and I, I think in the concert he does it like on on the floor but I, I like to do it on the pedal because then you can actually press down the pedal after the beat as well and this close on the piano you get an amazing sound of, of um, the the dampers leaving the strings like that so basically playing drums when he's doing that. Echo. Now ready for the resolution. Just savor it. And this gets kind of romantic now with this <laughs> harp scale. And the heartfelt melody. Now. So it's the same resolution to G major, but here he throws in a D major as a preparation chord. Uh, it's very, very like standard. Uh, tonal music thing to do uh, and it's just very nice now 
it starts moving again and now this is I would call this the A2 part here because this is a part with a lot of uh, steady pulse and um, even the stamping has more elements of the cadenza but this is some a little bit of something new here and we get only G major and A minor two bars each and you get, you're staying in this great state of almost hypnosis between the chords but now Keith Jarrett's very uh, very consciously I think is increasing the energy slowly so you you just go get along for that ride starts very soft but with a clear uh, beat note here on the A minor, the, just the seventh a G. And the D, the extra notes within the A minor. And G major. D again. getting somewhere okay now to increase energy he adds a tremolo on the course in the right hand so now we're really getting somewhere this is one of those things that's actually much easier to do than how it sounds like I think it sounds really cool but you just you just uh, turn your hand in a bit spastic manner and keep it slow I would say because it's come it's gonna come a couple of times so start slow uh, soft I mean and you add get that uh, low octave here this high note and really let the sound ring out here and now we get the next section it's like the cadenza before like an echo of that so after a long time here in the score it says rubato again so French ornament style Now the F major. Now just a G major scale. The D here in between. Now this is a bit uh, Sudden joy here. Like a final jazz solo here, just kind of trying to find the way back to G major. Now the final part of the A section we get the steady beat again uh, it starts in A minor and now we now the energy is gonna grow again and it's more syncopation here so it's more like a swing feel is if the last tempo part was like a rock feel this is uh, it's even it's more delicate and and super super nice it's like you got a ostinato vamp in the left hand having the, 
the tempo. This is already a little bit of G7 here. It's kind of a precursor to a section that comes later like, like that's like a blues feel. You get a little bit hint here. section we have had a minor and G major those two chords now it starts to add some new chords in the mix again so it will be blossom out so there's sometimes a D before the G that's we had before and now it's also an E before the A minor it's a very natural E just a, an extra dominant before A minor and from G we, we get this <laughs> Uh, seventh with an extra C back to A minor and this like uh, low key vamp. right hand finds these melodic fragments that it just explores and keeps on going over this uh, very secure and stable harmonic vamp. So after this like a super virtuosic jazz solo that um I, I haven't practiced so much for this I, I have done a recording so you should check that out because um, I can't really play this now, I'm sorry that. But after this, we get some, a new a transformation again. We end up on this D. So we know after D comes G. And after G normally comes A minor, but now he flips it. or a seventh and this section that comes now it has a like a blues feel or even gospel really all the energy just pure raw chords uh, the right hand's melody and the left hand does uh, syncopation vamp <laughs> Now, 
becomes something new. Now uh, it says here gentler in the score for one bar. So it's kind of taking down the energy again. And now this is another of many great moments. So we've still been within the A and G paradigm, if you will, for this. Even now it's uh, A major seventh and G seventh sometimes. Uh, now he starts to add like a melody. The right hand is, is finding a melody that's more than just a fragment. And it's a beautiful like a ballad and it goes to B flat major from, from a G. Uh, so that, that's a median uh, and that's the start of like a ballad section. so much that he does it again now so and the second time then it's moving on so this is a minor with an extra nine and now flips it again to a major right in the middle of this stuck on this, um, um, what is it, like a D 11th chord. And now, like what are we gonna do now? We've done everything. We've done the jazz and the blues and the ballad. So now he starts to, to really uh, look outside this harmony and uh, uh, find something new. So he's gonna go through a lot of harmonies and this is the transition to the major B section uh, after this beautiful resolution in the high register. We just get this chord. It's kind of going a circle of fifth with the left hand. So. Like it's going around with a two five one, I think, in jazz terms. This is like a nice medium. It's quite dissonant, but it's uh, it's raw and nice. Here he finally finds something. Uh, it's just a, a G, uh, an E, an E major chord, but it's from this uh, chromatic descent. Ah, I found it. And this is the back to the D again, actually. So you could end on a G here. That, that, that would be like a tonal, uh, boring ending, of course. So now this is uh, a double bar line in the score as well. I think this is like the start of the B section. So now we're going to get... Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets. The Patreon shoutout in this episode goes to N Ladas and SD.